119 yards. And LSU has won the toss tonight. They elected to defer. John Corbello has it teed up. And back deep for Mississippi State. If you look at Pig Prather and along with him, Fred Reed. So we're set to go. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, Mike Golick, and Michelle Tafoya. A game sold out for months. And Prather on the return with a flag down, breaks some tackles and reaches the 22-yard line. A return of 16, and we'll wait for the meaning of the indication. Mississippi State, one and four, their worst start since 1993. They finished that year four, five, and two. They feel they have a much better team than their record. That's Steve Shaw, referee. Wayne Madkin is the winningest quarterback ever, but has not had the type season he or his fans expected at all. He says, there's no doubt I'm a better quarterback right now than I've ever been, but I need to make some plays that I haven't made so far this year. Miller wearing a new number, and we'll tell you that story. He is number 31 tonight. And he has been battling an ankle since the South Carolina game, but he starts tonight after missing all last week and tries the left side maybe for a gain of one, brought down by Jarvis Green. And uh, you're not going to recognize any of these positions, Mike, on the Mississippi State front. But keep an eye on Tommy Watson, number 66. He's been playing center. He's over to guard. He's played that before, but a lot of new faces, as we'll get into. But Tommy Watson, the leader of that group. Defensively, Chad Lavalle is the man. Not a big guy, but he has some great moves on the inside line of scrimmage. Keep an eye on him. Madkin from his goal line with a swing out to Miller and Desenzo up the sideline and knocked out at the 40. 29 yards. Damian James hustling over to knock Desenzo Miller out. And if you ever wonder how that happens, it doesn't just occur because of good running. Nice blocking here by the right tackle, number 60, David Stewart. Sets. Here he comes, right at the bottom of your screen. You'll see him again as he turns up, drills his man. Couldn't pick it up from that angle, but a beautiful block by David Stewart. There it is. Got his man on the ground, and there goes Desenzo. I'm when the big guys get downfield. Oh, like yeah, that. that's nice. He is normally number 12. Tonight he's number 31 because his good friend fullback, Justin Griffith, who wore number 31, had a spur removed from his neck yesterday and is out for the year. So Desenzo with his own tribute for Griffith by wearing his jersey number tonight. Now from the 38, first down, and Miller has handled it in all three plays. This time stacked up for a gain of about a yard and a half. Hit first by Jeremy Lawrence, who leads the LSU linebacking court. Brady James and Trev Falk have 101 tackles between them, 51 and 50 respectively. That's an awful lot of tackles from a linebacking core many consider to be the best in the country. And this secondary has given up the most passing yards in the country, 335 per game on average. So if Madkin can't get well tonight, you may never have a better chance this year. Miller on every play to the 42, where he's hit by Chad Lavalle. And what you just talked about, Dave, is one of the two things I think Mississippi State needs to concentrate on, on tonight. Number one, get this man a lot of touches. Desenzo Miller has missed some time. Get him some touches with the balls. We see Chad Lavalle just talked about. Nice quickness going sideline to sideline. But you want to get the center middle of the touch of swing passes or runs and then try and work on that weak LSU pass defense. Fred Reed checking into the split back field on third and seven. And Madkin, well protected, decides to run. And comes up three yards short. So Madkin trying to make a play. He's been on himself for not making enough. And again, Jeremy Lawrence is there to bring it down. And Mike, right there, we could see one of the problems with the LSU pass defense, which is not secondary, but lack of pass rush. Absolutely. They only have six sacks this year in five games. That's second to last in the SEC. Not enough push by that front line of LSU. Keep your feet 
Jared Cook, redshirt freshman, Columbus, Georgia. On for the Bulldog punt. Dominic Davis has to race up and can't handle this one cleanly on the fly. He finally runs it out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And we'll see this prolific LSU offense go to work. And they are led by Rohan Davey. This is finally his job undisputed. No Josh Booty to compete with this year. And coming off a career game, 383 yards led the comeback win over Kentucky a week ago. Cofield with Lee in the backfield, Myers, Reed, one of the top receivers in the country. Royal is his tight end, and he's the weapon, too. Davey, in his last three games, has put on the board two of LSU's top six all-time passing totals. That's how hot he is coming in. First give across the 40. Tofield to the 41 and hit there by T.J. Mawinnick. Offensive front for LSU featuring Ben Wilkerson at center. His second straight start. True freshman, Hemphill, Texas. Rated maybe the best offensive lineman in the country last year. Connor Stevens left in as the leader of the defensive front. And they need to get more production out of the rest of these men. They need to start playing like Connor. Davey out of the gun on second and six. And a look for Reed over the middle. Running free. Cutting back. And still going inside the 20s at the 17. And you may be looking at the best in the country. 43 yards the first time he touches it. He is something else. Comes underneath Sean Birdsong. Goes on top of the linebackers. 20 yards per reception. 133 per game. And this is why great throw by Davey. Looking right behind the backers and in front of the rover. And then he does the rest on his own. Used to be a running back. So when he gets a ball in space like that, he knows exactly what to do with it. He only averages 20.3 <laughs> yards a catch. And more than doubled it on that one. Cofield hit for a gain of one. And a look at the Mississippi State linebackers tonight. Two of them. Mario Hagan, uh, he's a defensive end, a linebacker, defensive end. He's kind of all over the place. A great athlete. Missed last week's game against Troy State with an ankle. So we'll see how he is hobbling on that tonight. Many times they go one linebacker. They always go five DBs. And Prather, preseason All-America, the leader of that group. Pig, the senior from Faulkner, Mississippi. Their leading tackler coming in. Here's second and nine. And they come with a grip. And Davey, with a tackler hanging around his ankle, Dorsett Davis, throws it incomplete. The thing to look for here... Rohan Davies' physical strength. He throws off his back foot as a natural part of his rhythm, so this is not so hard for him. He's got people hanging all over him. He knows he's going to take a shot, but he's able to get rid of the football and throw it away so as not to take the big sack. How about this defense, though? There were only two defensive linemen that time. Everybody else in a two-point chance. This is all kind of crazy defense in this Joe Lee Dunn defense. Coming again on third and nine. Pump fake now to the end zone, and nobody's over there. Jarrell Myers broke off his pattern. Josh Morgan for the second play in a row coming with a safety blitz. I got to tell you, man, I have never seen a stadium this electric for a one and four football team. I mean, you got to give, take your hat off to the Mississippi State fans who have turned out in mass and loud with the cowbells to back their football team in the tough times. Corbello, 7 of 10 on the year to try a 33-yarder for the early lead for LSU. And he has it wide right. He had been perfect inside 40 yards, so an uncharacteristic miss by Corbello keeps us scoreless in Starkville. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com.
more powerful Acura 3.5 RL with satellite length navigation system. Pantheon 4 processor, the center of your digital world. Nice wrench work, Chief. If more men would heed the call of the Y chromosome, maybe more of us would have three such faucets at our fingertips. Hot. Cold. And... Miller High Life. Scott Field sold out since August. 45,000 or so. And happy at the current events with a very makeable field goal missed by Corbello. LSU blowing their first scoring opportunity. The Bulldogs have it down for the second time. And there is movement up front. Lavalet. It was right over the center, Blake Jones. That's what you're trying to say, Dave, that he should have seen the ball. Dead ball, <laughs> all sides on the defense, contact the I mean, exactly what I was doing. I mean, he's a couple play. inches from it. Let's send it back to uh, Reese Davis to wrap up BYU and Air Force. Okay, Dave, on a high-scoring day, we believe BYU and Air Force took the title. 99 points in that one, 63 of them belonging to BYU. Cougars still unbeaten. Nebraska and Texas Tech. The Huskers have the Sooners next week, but they've got to take care of the Red Raiders first. There's 28 all in the third. Every year, Tech is good for one huge upset. Desenzo Miller on first and five almost gets five. Let's check in down below with Michelle Tafoya. Well, Dave, Jackie Sherrill would never use injuries as an excuse for this one and four strike, but you've got to admit, his team is absolutely riddled with him. You mentioned Desenzo Miller wearing the jersey of his fallen teammate. The offensive line has been completely restructured, and new face at every position. The defense has been hurt. You're looking at a list of players, by the way, who are not starting. There are still starters in there, like Tommy Watson and Desenzo Miller, who are playing hurt, Dave. On second and one. Miller fighting to get the first down yardage to the 30 and appeared to come up short, wrestled to the ground by Kyle Kipps. You know, Bill, I said Desenzo Miller should get some early touches, but too many early touches. I mean, he's, he's been in and out some uh, throughout the last few games with the injury. One of the things that happens, especially with the back or a receiver who hasn't been able to practice, is that he gets out of shape. He's already winded. We're still, we're only six minutes into the football game, and I think he could get worn out in a hurry here. And he probably should be spelled. He has handled it on all but one play so far from Mississippi State. That was a keeper by Madkin. Finally across in motion on third and one. And on play action, Madkin has Lee. And he has big yardage to the 43. Gain of 14. Good job by Madkin squaring up. He saw the rush coming after him, and he knew he had to get his shoulders turned to get it out to Lee. You're going to see the pressure come from the left side of the screen. He knows it's coming, and he gets that ball out of there once Lee breaks out of the garbage in the middle. Nice pitch and catch for the first down. Two-year starter, B.B. Mississippi. And the junior tight end has the first down. Plenty more. Miller on a draw. Miller. A couple. And we talked about Justin Griffith. He is with Michelle DeFoy. Yeah, and he's fresh off the surgery. Yesterday had a bone spur removed from his neck. I know your surgery went well. How surprised were you that Desenzo Miller decided to wear your number in that gesture? A uh, real surprise. Uh, coming in the surgery and then coming to the locker room and seeing he had my jersey on. He said he had a surprise for him on the phone. I really appreciate him doing that for him. And I hope. Uh, I'll see you right now. You're having a good game so far, so I hope we continue to do it the rest of the night. Best of luck with your recovery, Justin. Thank you. Back to you, Dave. I was surprised to see him up and around and so spry one day after going under the knife. Miller breaking, tackle, and then the fumble as he reaches the Tiger 40. After that, 
The second thing that happens to a tailback who has not that nice shot of Justin Griffith, expressionless, watching his buddy fumble the ball, not too happy about that. The second thing that happens with a back is that he loses that fine edge of being aware of ball security. This just slips out. It really was not knocked out, and that will be something that Desenzo will have to concentrate on. But you also saw the burst that Mississippi State's been missing in his absence. With this replacement fullback, Darnell Jones recovered Desenzo Miller's fumble. And another play fake by Mackin being chased and gets it almost into the hands of Harold Lindsay. A nice throw on the run. We throw it back to Reese. All right, Dave, update on Texas Tech and Nebraska. Now Eric Crouch, who continues to add to that rushing touchdown by a quarterback record. And the band's in from the seven right there, and the Huskers have gone on top, 35-28. Now it's the Raiders' turn. And, Bill, Eric Crouch has what in common with Wayne Madden? Well, they are the two top winningest quarterbacks active in football today. Crouch has won 27, Madkin has won 24 in his career at Mississippi State. Good knowledge out of you, Bill. Thank you so much. I've been hanging around you. Second and 10. And the line, Justin Jenkins, who lost his starting job Jenkins. this week, is hot collared by Brady James. Hi, Brady James. First time Jenkins handles it. It is not on a throw. He had several drops last week, and Madkin's numbers were kind of artificially poor because he didn't get much help from his receivers in the major upset loss here to Troy State. Yeah, Justin dropped five balls in the rain, but they say he's a great kid and they want a good player. They want to get him back active. Mike, that was good contained. Great job by Brady James getting outside. Bulldog timeout, 7.03 in the first quarter. Still scoreless, but they are marching. Horsepower Acura CL Type S. too far from here an amazing likeness of the bulldog mascot bully and uh, mike your opinion of the sculptor and his fine work to sculpt something that's so ugly it's cute now there's the real thing that's a good looking dog right there that's kind of like you bulldog bells nothing like you you're cute <laughs> from the 42 third and 10. Ray Bivens in motion. They come after Madkin. And again, as he tries to run, they come up well short of the first. Guided out of bounds by the free safety, Ryan Clark. Well, Jarvis Green lost contain. It's his job to keep Madkin in the pocket. But boy, did Ryan Clark make up for Green's mistake. Because Madkin had the corner. I thought he was going to get the first down. And Ryan Clark came flying out of nowhere to force this punt. Now Mississippi State got to try and pin him inside the 10-yard line. Davis dropping back, and this is not a team that has done much damage at all with special teams. This is a fake, and they snap it to Miller, and Miller gets nowhere. 
maybe a yard. As Mississippi State comes out in a gambling mood with their one and four record, Lou Saban special teams stifle that one and they will take over. A problem with the snap here, and this happens so often. Charles Meredith, number 67, is the long snapper. So DeCenzo doesn't get to hit the hole with the right kind of timing, and I'm not, I'm not so sure it would have worked anyhow. But you have to gamble. You have to do something when you're stuck like Mississippi State has been. So the Tigers give it to their 41. And Davey with the long sideline out and incomplete for Reed, who got jarred at just the right time by Corey Banks. I want, I want to go back to the uh, to the punt again because uh, the fake punt because you're talking about field position changing and I'm not sure coach why they did that I mean normally where they were punting from you're not going to get a return by the return team because it's so close so I I'm a little surprised you there's no way LSU is going to set up a return you see none of the guys they're all looking in the back so they're not even trying for a return I don't understand why they called the fake that and gonna... they were in safe punt they were playing exactly. defense I think you're right there's Cofield up near midfield. Now, one of the things that Coach Sherrill has cautioned his troops about is that they cannot let Tofield into the secondary. He said to us, if Brendan, Le LeBrendan Tofield gets loose in our secondary, we don't have anybody that can catch him. He has outstanding speed. Doesn't look like a fast guy, but he can really accelerate. Nine touchdowns, seventh in the country, and best in the Southeastern Conference. And Davey out of the gun on third and three finds Josh Reed. He can be dangerous deep or if you just need three yards for a first. That is a pro route is what that is. I mean, I know it's a three yard out, but that's a pro route because he got past the sticks. It looks simple. You work on it a thousand times, but you have to execute it in the game. A lot of times receivers will want to cut that a little short because they see the defender off. He made sure he got to the sticks. The junior on pace to set a new SEC record. This is one of the oldest records in the book, too. Yards per game. Been on the book since 1969. And Tofield brought down by Morgan. Well, your chance to go behind the scenes with the Miami Hurricanes as they prepared for their intrastate showdown with Florida State. The season, a week with the Miami Hurricanes, tomorrow at 10.30, only on ESPN go to class with the guys too find out tomorrow All right i'm tuning in all we know is uh, how that week ended for him pretty nice then you yeah. could find out what it's like to go to class i'll see you know what why did i not know that was going to happen <laughs> <laughs> we know the damn one so we're going to be relentless on you today <laughs> davy steps up over throws myers who was open it'll be third and ten Rohan Davy has an unusual passing motion, and when he airs, it will usually be to overthrow his receiver. Right here, he does not step forward. You watch, this foot does not come forward in the standard method of throwing the football. He throws it off the back foot. Doesn't have nearly the forward thrust that most quarterbacks, and sometimes it fails on him. Only one team better at converting third down. And they need right at 10 as the marker down. That one's broken up, intended for Reed. And Sean Birdsong got a hand up there, but the flag was thrown on the snap. Yeah, that's going to be offsides on T.J. Mawinney. He came in, he was coming right over the center on a blitz, and he stepped right into the neutral zone right as they snapped the ball. So LSU will get another shot on that. Offsides on the defense, five-yard penalty. We'll repeat third down. Joe. Defensive coordinator yeah. Joe Lee Dunn. Doesn't look happy, does he? Not much reason to, although he does point out, and very correctly, that this, this season everybody's looking at a disaster. Two field goals, and they don't lose to South Carolina and Auburn 16-14. And maybe they come in this right in the thick of the West race. They didn't, and they're not. But he thinks they're not that far from still being one of the best groups in the country. Incomplete. That's the first time that Davey goes to a true freshman who has really become a weapon for him, Michael Clayton out of Baton Rouge. Again, the pass high. This time, in all fairness, 
to Davey. He's got Connor Stevens right in his face. Number 90. A protection error by the up front people. There's Clayton with the route just pushing to the sticks again. The pass high and behind a bit. You said that release on with Davey built and get him into a little bit of trouble. Donnie Jones cut is going to sail almost all the way out of the end zone on the fly. He missed the corner. He met <laughs> only 22 yards. 436 in the first quarter. Nothing like last year. No score yet. Hi, I'm Mark Radley. If you've got an auto glass that needs to be repaired or replaced, you don't have to go anywhere else. You pay the premiums, you choose a shop. Insurance? No problem. We're on most insurance companies' referral list, as well as Safe Light and Lynx Billing. No insurance? We've got some of the most competitive prices in the area. Fast installation for auto glass, windshields, door, and back glass. The newest technology in auto glass repair. From the first call to install, we'll do it all. I'll do you a good job at a fair price and guarantee it. We get a break, you get a deal. Are you looking for a great deal at a new Ford? Well, guess what? It's time for Cartwright's 2001 Year Model Closeout Sale. Ford is offering 0.9% financing. In addition, Cartwright will sell any 2001 vehicle in stock for just $99 over a factory invoice. And as always, Cartwright's 100,000 mile warranty is included. So come on out and see our 2001 Model Closeout Sale before it's too late. He claims to be not human. Visitor from another planet. On October 26th. Where is home? K-Pax. Celebrate the possibilities. Okay. She doesn't like it when you sneak up on her. No way. K-Pax. Rated PG-13. At theaters Friday. Circuit City presents Expo 2001. 30 days of what's new, what's hot, and what's next. Featuring live demos of HDTV, digital photography, high-speed internet access, and more. All this month at Circuit City. Circuit City. We're with you. ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. Back at Scott Field, and nothing, nothing. 4.37 to go in the first quarter, and Mississippi State will again take it from their 20. And Fred Reed. With the take it tailback in there for Miller. Madkin going where he wanted the block, and he keeps and picks up about eight yards. The Mississippi State rush attack was the best in the SEC just a year ago. They averaged 194 yards per game, but they've fallen way off that pace to 11th in the SEC this year. And only two rushing touchdowns. Okay, they've had, obviously, injuries in the backfield with the Senzo Miller, that offensive line, which needs to be the cohesive, most cohesive unit on the field, has had some injury problems as well. But, again, you don't want to use uh, injuries as a total excuse. Second down to two. And Reed started up the middle. Found a little more room to his liking around the left end and picks up the first down, down to Michelle. Well, Dave, after that disappointing last week to, to Troy State, Sparky Woods told his offense, look, let's rely on fact, not opinion, to understand what is true about this team. He said the film of the game showed even him things he had missed during the game. The focus on the film was Woods' way of countering the, you know, let's find someone to blame syndrome and instead focus on solutions that were realistic, Dave. And I think they've... They believe they've come up with some for this week. Solutions and not scapegoats, what he was looking for Precisely. all week. So, after Reed picks up the first, the fake to Reed on the toss intended for the fullback, Darnell Jones, who is not used to handling the ball. He's used to playing behind Justin Griffith. He's carried it only four times all year and has not been looked at as a pass receiver. He's a fine blocker, but that's where they miss Justin Griffith. He catches the ball well, turns it up the field, and makes things happen. It's just been the kind of year where backups are forced to play and they aren't quite up to snuff. And Jones has had his own health problems with a dislocated kneecap, which has slowed him a bit for most of the year. Ripped it back in on second and ten. And Madkin lets the rush come after him. Marker down, the screen set up for Desenzo Miller, and he's tripped up by Trev Fall. That's, uh, that's going to be holding on Mississippi State. I believe they're going to get Derek Thompson, number 76, for that one. 
Both starting tackles are back on the field. Derek's one of them. The other one's Kendrick Fairchild on the right side, 77. We'll see what the call is. You're doubting me, Bill? We'll see what the call is. That hurts. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. I was right there with you. Excuse me, Bill? Well, you can get lucky. <laughs> Left tackle position. Oh, he hooked his foot. How about that? Oh, we're going to have to see that one again. That was, that, that was too good. That's the old last you know technique. But you got to do what you got to do. We just got caught doing it. Hey, I give you credit. You caught one. You saw one, big man. You don't miss much. I have to confess. And I think all the way to the 21, second and 20. Hey, she yet to substitute defensively. Their toss is complete over the middle, and Aaron Lumpkin has just his third catch of the year. Right on him immediately is Hawk, and third and long coming up. And let's go back to the holding, and I've got, got to check this out on Derek Thompson again. The left tackle up top here. Watch him. The stunt and coming to the inside. Watch him down low. See him down right here. Watch what he's going to do. Grab the old foot. <laughs> do what you got to do, but he got caught. <laughs> This guy wasn't even the biggest danger. <laughs> that would have been Howard Green. Third and 15. And Madkin firing a one-hopper intended for Harold Lindsay, whose pattern was not going to give him a first down, even with a strike. Randall Gay, the nickelback, had the coverage on Lindsay. And one thing, Bill, that, that LSU is doing, we just talked about the stacks, but let's talk about pressure. Right now, they're getting in Wayne Madkin's face a little bit. They're using a lot of stunts, yep. and they're really confusing this offensive line. Although both starting tackles are out there, they shouldn't be having this kind of trouble. This kick was very short. Davis had to sprint forward to take it. This one will take a nice bulldog bounce, and that is the 27-yard line. 47 yards with the roll. Monday night, ESPN has a full hour and a half of Sports Center, including the results of the first BCS poll. Tune in to see how the top teams in the nation stack up early. Chris Fowler, joined by Lee Corso, Herb, Kirk Herb Street, Tony Barnhart, and a host of Division I coaches. Sports Center, Monday night, a special edition beginning at 6 Eastern on ESPN. Talking about that BCS that's coming out. Uh, Miami, it seems, has been fully prepared for the fact that they are not going to be in the top spot when the initial BCS comes out. They're probably as low as five or six. And could it happen to them two years in a row? Yep, it sure could. Holding on the kicking team, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat fourth down. Now, this Mississippi State team averages over 79 yards a game in penalties. That it can be disastrous when you're trying to fight out of a hole like they are. They've got to cut back on these kinds of things. Well, they're not right now. <laughs> they're number one in the SEC at being penalized. <laughs> well, I'm not getting the answer he liked as to who was the guilty party last time. This is a good kick by Cook. Davis at the 36. So the wall set up on the left side. And all the way to the 46 of Mississippi State. Another 47-yard putt and 17 on the Dominic Davis return. Tigers have spent most of this first quarter in or near Mississippi State territory. They'll start here at the 46. And Cheryl still raging at uh, the most recent of the Mississippi State penalties. Kick coverage is a function of lane integrity, and people get out of their lanes, and that's why you see a long return like that. Davey not pressured this time, and floating one deep for Reed, who can't make the leaping catch at the 10. The leap is right, with him stride for stride, and another flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Oh, boy. I hope we're not going to have a flag night. <laughs> a flag night. And you, you're exactly right, Michael. We've had some flag nights, and we're not talking about American flags. No. We're talking about those yellow ones. This is procedure against the Tigers. 
This matchup last year saw a touchdown in the first Illegal 30 formation. seconds. Six men on the line on the offense. Penalty is declined. It'll be second down. Bad can hit uh, Grendel for 82 yards on their first series. And both teams were off to the races. And 83 points and overtime later, Lou Saban had one of his big first year wins, 45-38. So far, this one bearing no resemblance whatsoever to that matchup at Tiger Stadium. One good scoring chance ended with a missed 33-yard LSU field goal. Cofield is to the 43. South Carolina taking on Vandy Reese Davis. And Lou has emptied the bench. Dave Dondreal Pinkins in. He's a quarterback of the future, some believe, for the Gamecocks. Very athletic guy. Well, and he's like looking Richard. for Willis Hammond. What are you talking about, Willis? Willis with a touchdown, 11 yards, and Gamecocks pouring it on right now, 46-14 in the fourth. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> Third and seven. Mississippi State going all out, and they get Davey at the 46. This is a take-your-pick pass rush. Oh, Wayne Robertson, Josh Morgan, Robert Spivey, Mario Hagan, all in on the sack. Mario Hagan, a linebacker, coming right up the gut. Here he is, straight up the middle, tight end, trying to get over Robert Royal to get him, not in position to do it. You see 86 coming, going for the legs. He is in no position to cut him off as Hagan's going from point A to point B in a straight line. They're going to get called for defensive holding down the field. Corey, yeah, Corey Banks, number two. Holding on the defense, 10 yards from the previous spot, first down. Now that is a killer penalty. Wow. This is where penalties absolutely destroy the continuity of a football team. Big play by Mario Hagan. The big play guy is coming through and doing his job. And down the field, a youngster gets careless. Corey Banks, first year as a starter, grabs hold of Michael Clayton, and you can't do that. Right here on the bottom of the screen, just watching going down the field. The flag's going to come down late. He's hitting him there. Tough to see him just hanging on to him, but the ref threw it late when they were all the way down the field. New life for the Tigers, Tofield, looking for room, and tackles the break to the 27. And again, multiple maroon jerseys on him. First man there was Demetric Wright, and Pig Prather is still down, so is T.J. Mawinney. This has been a defensive sequence in which nothing has gone right for Mississippi State. Well, except for one thing. They are playing their guts Boy, they out. are. They bro. are playing oh. so hard. Hagan's flying around, so he's gotten, if he's not completely well, he's well enough that he can play a lot like Mario Hagan's capable of coming into the season as a preseason All-American. And Joe Lee Dunn has absolutely made a decision. He's going to get after Rohan Davey. They're in every gap. They're up daring them, and they're coming after him. And the head coach is after the officials, and everybody's after everybody. That's football. We love it. Kamal Jackson is also heading to play backup fullback. Is then backing up Mulroney now at linebacker. And Cofield will have the first down. He's inside the 22 on the last play of the first quarter. We don't get any points. We get a lot of flags. And the quarter ending with Cheryl Hutt and LSU looking at a second scoring chance. Junior middleweight fight. Bronco McCart versus Alex Benima. Friday night fight, 9 p.m. Friday on ESPN2. Dorm life, nightlife, and of course, football. The rites of passage at Texas A&M. A season of college football from the sidelines. Thursday at 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific on ESPN. Unscripted with Chris Connolly premieres Monday at 5 on ESPN.
more powerful Acura 3.5 RL with satellite linked navigation system. This is awesome! American Pie's Jan and Elizabeth is in the house. And 13 ghosts want a piece of her. 13 ghosts. Rated R. Starts Friday at a theater near you. You go fishing every weekend, right? And you never catch a thing. It's not a bad Ottoman! What is going on? Furniture, why is there furniture? Shaping dish. Shaping dish. I thought I told you to strap everything down. Coffee table. Morning commute. Gosh! On the wings of Goodyear. No, then. The magic's gone, yeah. isn't it? You need a table for two. And a bubble bath. Champagne. That'll work. Mary would come out and play rates, make this a great weekend to rekindle the flame. Can you make me irresistible? Yeah. Oh. Call 1 800 Marriott. Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. Your Marriott awaits. Man, that sandwich was good. Is there another one? We're saving it for Dave. You can't resist Wendy's bacon mushroom milk with all that bacon and cheddar. Hey, Dave, why don't you stay out a few more laps? Okay. Where's that sandwich? Here. When you gotta have one, you gotta have one. Back for the second quarter, Scott Teal, Starkville. Saw an awful lot of action for no points in the first quarter. The second quarter starts with another give to Tofield, who had 25 yards on seven carries on pace for another 100-yard outing. Senzo Miller, close to that pace after... Finally getting healthy enough to start. He had this catch for 30 yards and carried it eight times for 24. Josh Reed, number 25 for the Tigers, I think is the most exciting receiver in the Southeastern Conference. He makes things happen after he catches the football. Mississippi State tried the first trick play of the game. LSU said, uh-uh, not here. Cofield being a blitz, coming back right side, tripped up to the seven. And from there, first and goal, LSU. Hagan and Prather keep him from scoring. He picks up 12 as it is. That was a vision run. Tofield saw Josh Morgan coming from his backside, and he knows there's going to be a hole there, and he cuts right back. You see number 47 behind you. He came flying up the field, not on a good enough angle, gave Tofield a little hole to cut back into. So a real scoring chance now. LSU missing a short field goal in the first quarter. On first and goal, Cofield standing up, touchdown. And a marker down. Uh, that makes sense. If the play stands, Cofield adds to his lead, top scorer in the SEC. Hoping this one will count and become his 10th touchdown of the year. After the play, dead ball, personal foul on the offense. The touchdown is good. We will put like 15 yards on the track. All right, so the extra point all of a sudden becomes anything but automatic. Long one-pointer, Josh Reed. Josh being a self-appointed advocate for his position. I did not do any, I didn't touch him, coach. Bobello, 14 of 16 on PATs, missed a 33-yard field goal. This is even longer than that, the 35-yard PAT is perfect. So it is 7-0 LSU. Nothing fancy with the run. She picked Prather there. He has the outside doing a good job. No help from his teammates on the inside. Tofield in for the score. Very good. <laughs> you can dunk, but you can't dip. Your dip is gone, baby. What are you talking about? No dip.
Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Let me tell you something, Bill. I put the hip in chip. Watch this. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design for the perfect dip every time. New Tostito Scoops. Whoa. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> this is my house. Yes, it is. No, this is my house. You guys got to go. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. It's here, kids! I think it's too big, Dad. Like to know exactly what you're getting before you buy it? Go to BestBuy.com and research everything before you go to the store. That way, you'll get what's right for you. Best Buy. Go ahead. Turn on the fun. A beer is only as good as the ingredients used to brew it. That's why Budweiser uses only the finest all-natural ingredients, hand-selected to deliver a taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability you won't find in any other beer at any price. This buzz for you, and you and you and you, this buzz for you. LSU 7 to nothing, and LeBrandon Tofield Gashing Jolie Dunn's defense repeatedly on that scoring drive, including the seven yard scoring run. The double kicking. Prather and Reed deep. Big from the three. Not a whole lot on the return. Arizona's been close all night with Washington. How is it now, Reese Davis? Well, Dave, we know of the Huskies' tension for fourth quarter comebacks. They're going to get another opportunity. Arizona giving to Clarence Farmer inside the 20, and Clarence takes it to the house. 28-21, long kickoff return after that. Led to a Washington field goal with 28-24, four and change to go. Nebraska and Texas Tech. Huskers up by a touchdown, but Nebraska is driving. They have the ball in the Tech 11 with the first and 10. And as planned, the backup Kevin Pant getting a series here early in the second quarter. Not a comment on Madkin. They want to give Pant much time as possible when the game's uh, still competitive. He takes 40% of the practice reps as it is, and that is Dante Walker who's in the backfield for the first time. And Jarvis Green making another tackle. So Kevin Fant got to be popular because the backup's always popular, especially when the team is struggling. Always the most popular guy out there when you're in trouble, when you're having problems. Although his numbers, which we just showed you, are not exactly backing up the case that he should get much more time than Madison. Going to the air, right to the end over the middle, and Jenkins. After suffering all the drops last week, picks up 15 yards and a first down brought down by Demetrius Cookfin. If you're a Bulldogs fan or player, it's nice to see Jenkins get back into the flow. Five drops a week ago, the coaches were anxious. They, they sat him down, but they were anxious to get him an easy catch. Good concentration, put the ball away. Good job. Get their good player cranked up again. Justin Jenkins. He did catch their only touchdown last week, and it was spectacular. One-hander. You can make those. This is deep over the middle. And tagged after hanging on. Miller by Ryan Clark, but he does hang on, and it's 22 yards. Well, this is what exactly what you would expect Mississippi State to do. We talked about it early. Go after the pass defense for LSU. They're giving up 335 yards a game. But ranked 115th in the nation. Look at this throw. A little high. Great job by Miller going up oh. for it. And does he pay the price by Ryan Clark? But hey, Miller hopped right up through the ball of the ref and said, let's have at it again. How'd the helmet stay on? Oh. Chin step for the 45. <laughs> Pat, thank you. This is going to be overthrown for Jenkins. <laughs> Quick question, a quick answer. Well, if you've been ricocheted as many times as I have, you know the answer to that one. <laughs> well, we've seen two big ones in the middle of the field, so let's see what both sides of the coaching staff do about that. Well, when you're playing cover two, meaning you've got two hash safeties, the fullback and the tight end down the middle is the weakness of the defense, of the coverage, and they've got to be able to go up and make that catch and take that hit and hang on, and that's exactly what the Senzo did. 
Three wide outs on second and ten. Fab the sophomore from Moss Point, Mississippi. Rolling out to the close hit. Pick up of seven or eight for Donald Lee, the tight end. And Lawrence doling out the hit as Madkin watches the offense move without him. Now here's an interesting thing, Michael. Sparky Woods told us, look, we tell Kevin Fan he's going in. If he plays great, he's coming out. If he plays bad, he's coming out. Has nothing to do with performance, but I'm telling you, if it were me, I'd be real tempted to leave him in there. He is hot. You know, just 9 out of 25 with 3 intercepted coming in. That was a better series. 3rd and 2 to keep it going. Problem on the snap. Oh, Mississippi man. State recovers but loses a yard. Somebody did not know the snap count. Now, Blake Jones, the sophomore offensive center, has moved in and taken over the center position for Tommy Watson. Tommy Watson, number 66, has moved to right guard. Fant was not ready for the ball. You see nobody, nobody else is moving, moving right. either. That means yep. that it was a young center mistake. Yeah. And a crucial one. Now they're going to go for it. No putter on the field on fourth and three. Lake Jones. New starter at center. Walker out of the backfield in motion. Fant to throw and walk. Walker to the 20. Not all the gambles for Jackie Sherrill have paid off this year. This one pays off big for 17 yards. You cannot be one and four, come out in front of a crowd like this and play conservative football. They've gone for the fake. And now they've got creative thinking offensively. Michael? Ryan Clark, Trev Falk up on the line. Goes right where they were. Clark and Falk coming up. Back goes behind him. Easy first. Walker and Miller in tandem the way they were expected to all year. Both effective. Action Pete Walker. This one is not effective. This loses two, and it is strung out perfectly by Damian James and Demetrius Hookfin. I <laughs> tell these guys are playing some football here now. Number 33, Darnell Jones. Through a lead block there like you pray your fullback. Watch him. He's coming out of the backfield now. He's the lead block. Boom. Oh, <laughs> wow. Are you kidding me? Ryan Clark, he said, little fella, don't come up here with the big guys now. <laughs> Ryan, don't jump. <laughs> Ryan was going to hurdle him. Oh. That is one of the big guys injured for LSU. Jarvis Green, the defensive end. Jarvis had a good first good couple good of series. Good. He was all over the field. Ryan Clark has been playing inspired football, and he would have been right in the middle of that until he got launched. I was impressed by what Madkin said about how much responsibility he thinks is fair to put on his shoulders for their start. He said, you know, maybe the way I show I'm a leader is to get everybody else to make plays. Maybe I don't make the play myself, but I bring out the best in everybody on that side. That's right. He, he, he was very impressive in accepting responsibility. And right now, he's got to be impressed by this Kevin Fant engineer drive. Second and 12. Back through the hands of Reed, intercepted. Damian James, who leads the SEC, has his fifth pick of the year and brings it back 20 yards, knocked out by Fant. Oh, and did Brady James come up and level the receiver? Ball pops in the air. Great play. You wonder if fan coach put a little too much on this ball. He's really trying to drill it in there. I see it right there. Brady James. After the nah. fact, before he lit him up. You know what? That's a young tailback. Hadn't played much. Freshman, Fred Reed, just didn't make the catch. He wasn't hit till well after the ball went through his hands. I just like to hit. Baby pass batted down and incomplete. Robert Spivey. This is your kind of game, yeah. big man. You love tackle football. Yeah, they they yeah. play in some tackle tonight. Yeah, know me might out. I didn't care about the interception. I just wanted to see the hit again. <laughs> well, game. you know, you can pick any play and there'll be some hitting. In this, but this is Southeastern Conference football. Two teams with their backs to the wall. One of the thing about Damian James is he was leading the league even before that fifth interception, and he was a backup. He finally got a start as they moved him from backup free safety to left corner tonight.
Davey gets this one off for Reed. And tripped up from behind by Sean Birdsong. But Reed good for another 12 yards, another LSU first down. Misdirection, misdirection. This is what they do. They catch Birdsong coming inside a little bit. Josh Reed can beat him outside. Watch him going across. The motion to the quarterback gets Mississippi State going one way. Reed takes it the other way. 20 yards of catch. That's still amazing to me what he's averaging. Well, if Rex Grossman isn't the best player of the SEC, Josh Reed may well be. Morgan on a safety blitz. Davey gets it up. What a catch by the freshman Clayton. And a flag down even as he makes the catch. And he makes it inbounds at the 24 against Corey Banks. Michael Clayton, true freshman, is spoken of with tones of reverence by his coaches. They say things like, we've never seen a true freshman with this kind of poise. I think, uh, I don't think he's getting a freshman call right here. Pass interference on the offense. 15 yards from the previous five. First down. Yeah, he'll learn how to hide it a little better, huh, Bill? He's just a freshman. There's a push off. Put, well, I don't know I about don't that. Know. Let me tell you. They're, they're yeah. pushing and shoving, Absolutely. both of them running down the sideline. Huh. Maybe the officials are trying to send a message to a true freshman who's lighting it up. I hope not. I hope right. they wouldn't do a thing like that, but that was that was not a very good call. I agree. I mean, when your hand fight, you let them hand fight, and the better hand fighter wins. I let that go. They even had the game-winning touchdown with 13 seconds last week. This battle to beat Kentucky. This is Dominic Davis. He fights about as hard as he can for a yard. It is great fun to be a lineman and play in a game like this. Look at the big guy. Look at Big Davis, number 99. Dorset Davis. He's lined up right here. Everybody coming. It's a Joe Lee defense. Great job of two gap. Plugged up the whole middle and allowed his teammates to swarm to the football. And the big guys fired up just like everybody else on both teams. One, two D linemen again. That's all they need this time. They're coming after Davey again. Nice block that time by Dominic Davis. Nice pass to Reed. Hog collared again. And a flag on this tackle by Morgan at midfield. It's 15 yards before we hear about the penalty. Josh, with no doubt that this Josh got him by the face mask. Josh Dominic. and Josh. Five-yard face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat second down. Mooney's blitzing again. Watch the pickup right here. Dominic Davis hitting 53. Good job Three taking him low. Line. That one's starting to get easy to read. Mooney's uh, really kind of giving that one away. We'll check out the face mask. Yeah, I think Josh Morgan got a break here with only a five-yarder. That was a pretty substantial grab, and that could have been a 15. The crowd didn't like it, but it was a very good call. Josh Morgan, a tough guy. He's the free safety. He's all over the field. One of the guys Coach Sherrill said has continued to play well through all this. He's having some fun. We've got to keep an eye on the blitzing. T.J. Mawinney is blitzing a lot, number 53 for Mississippi State. He's blitzing. He's giving away the blitz. If you're doing that, you know someone's going to be there to pick you up. He's going to have to start doing some things to avoiding the block to, or, or getting away from the blocks a little better instead of trading one for one. From second and 24, now second and three. And Reed with a step on the defense. Driven out by Richard Ball at the 16-yard line, 29 yards this time, and nobody can cover Josh Reed. What else is new? Football is a game of mismatches, and when you get Josh Reed one-on-one -on -one with anybody, you probably got a good shot at a mismatch. Separates from the corner, ball, and a perfect throw by Rohan Davis. Well, this is easy for Davey. He reads blitz. He says, okay, I'm going to go to my guy, Josh Reed, who's out there. I know he's one-on-one. -on -one. I'll throw it up in the air, and I got more confidence in my guy than Mississippi State has in theirs. That's a record for Reed. 103 yards, his 13th career 100-yard game. Time Gwendol Davis is marked. Took Davis four years. He's taken Josh about a year and a half. Cofield back in. Short gain, Arizona and Washington again. Reese Davis. 
Dave, you mentioned LSU scoring the game-winning touchdown with 13 seconds against Kentucky. Uh, same thing might have happened for the Huskies. Cody Pickett, the former rodeo champion with a bad shoulder, tough, breaking tackles, 13 ticks to go. He gets in for the touchdown, 31-28. And the game, I believe, just went final. 31-28 is the final. Florida State over Virginia right now. They're in the third quarter, 17-7. Rodeo guy, huh? So he yeah, picked that's it. a name for the rodeo, isn't it? Me? That, that run was easier than roping a spear. On second and seven, Davy retrieved back about 20 yards. Has Reed again. Reed has a touchdown. 14 yards, Josh Reed. 13 nothing. Tigers. Bill, what does that say about Rohan Davies' arm strength? Just backing up, backing up, knowing he's going to have the crosser. Reed just comes right across the field, knows he just gets the ball laid right up for him. Pig Prather comes over, a little late, can't make the tackle. Well, there's a lot of traffic, and Pig can't get up tight on him the way he had liked. There were no picks on the play, but there were a lot of bodies in the way. For Bello adds the extra point. Surprisingly, this is just the second touchdown catch of the year for Josh Reed. But the records continue one by one to fall. Already his 1300th yard game. We are still in the second quarter. And he's put the Tigers up by two touchdowns. Get down in the dirt. Get down on the dunes. Get down on the trail. Get your monthly payments way down. As low as $69 a month and no down payment with a Honda card. Get or get low 6.9% financing and no down payment on any new Honda ATV. Get down to earth deals now at your Honda dealer. America is in mourning. A long period of uncertainty and recovery awaits us all. I'm Rob Lowe. The American Red Cross is providing life-saving assistance, including precious blood, food, shelter, and grief counseling. As we honor our heroic relief workers, victims, and their families, please call 1-800-GIVE-LIFE to donate blood, or 1-800-HELP-NOW to offer financial support. Together we can save a life. There may never be a play in college football more memorable than the Doug Flutie to Gerard Phelan fantastic finish when Boston For a limited time only, order your free copy online at hofn.org or call toll-free 1-866-ENDZONE. Tony Kornheiser, Michael Robach. Pardon the interruption. 5.30 p.m. Eastern weekdays on ESPN and again at 7 on ESPN2. Mississippi State about to get the ball and Wayne Mack is apparently about to sit for another series as Kevin Fant. That's not his football helmet. Nope. Kevin Fant moved him impressively until a well-thrown ball through the hands of Fred Reed was intercepted by Damian James, leading to the second LSU score. Ray Ray Bibbins struggles to reach the 14-yard line. Well, how do you cover Josh Reed? Well, better than what Mississippi State's doing right now. They're going to have to. He's just getting open, either dragging over the middle or just outrunning coverage. It's a guy, again, averaging over 20 yards per catch, runs precision routes, ball thrown well to him. Remember, this guy was a running back. So just before the Alabama game in 1999, so when he gets the ball in his hand, he does a great job of getting the yards after the catch. Six catches, 116 yards already for Reed. Pat throwing with two defenders in the neighborhood and a strike to Terrell Wendell down in the shell. Fant is a sophomore quarterback who's backing up Wayne Madsen, who is Mississippi State's winningest quarterback. But after he threw that interception, he did not look like a sophomore backup. He was on the bench in the offensive line meetings talking about specifically what went wrong on that play. He was talking to all of his receivers, and he got maybe the best endorsement of all from Wayne Madsen himself, who said, hey, just one mistake, get back in there and play well. Well, that's impressive. The guy who started for four years and had the success that Wayne Madkin has had. 
Another throw. Harold Lindsay beating Hookpin for 13 yards. This is what they have to do, Bill. Again, this is a LSU pass defense giving up 335 yards. They're just attacking it now with the out routes and precision throwing. That's right. You, you tease me about talking and thinking like a coach, but I do. And many, many times, a backup will come in the game and just outplay himself, outdo himself, and have a great game. And that's the way Fant has started. Mississippi State has outgained LSU, and particularly they have through the air. Miller and the tackle by Brady James. Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern. Stuart Scott, Tom Jackson, Sterling Sharp, Steve Young, Chris Mortensen, all joining your host, Chris Berman, as they prepare you for all the day's NFL games. Tomorrow, Chris and the gang take an in-depth look at the 40 seconds between plays on NFL Countdown, only on ESPN. Second and five from the 44. Vincenzo Miller picking his way close to the first down, a couple feet shy. Jarvis Green, who was injured on the last series, back in now and helping out on that tackle. I'll tell you another thing to watch for, guys, on Countdown tomorrow. Bill Parcells is going to be in the studio with and Tom Jackson. And I talked to those guys about a piece they're doing on tackling and how it's changed in the NFL with the rule changes and really it, it bleeds on down into college football as well with how they're dealing with tackles and dealing with hits to uh, hit the uh, leading with your head and tackling them. It is about two feet for the first down. And Miller is stuck right at the line of scrimmage. Great he, didn't get, he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage, did he? What do you do, Bill? What do you do? Coach, you go for it. Down 14 zip. Yeah, you go for it. You got the last Wait one. Wait a minute. I want to see how much they lack. If, if, if it's a lo over a yard, you punt the ball. If you got less than a yard, less you got to go for it. Less than a yard. Go, 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 go. You got to go. go. All right. Love that. There was one for two tonight on Gamble. Third punt in the first quarter didn't work. Fourth and three did. Good field position is tough to come by. You got a hot quarterback. You want to keep the ball. Everybody in tight. Triple stack out. And nobody found him until he had gained 11, 12 yards making. And you can just thank Coach Sparky Woods for knowing what's going on in the contain area of LSU on fourth and short and a brilliant call. Nice fake, and the fake sells it right here. Everybody with a white shirt on thinks that DeCenzo Miller has this football until just about now. Aaron Lumpkin better be careful. 87, yes. boy, they could have called that. Yes, they could have, and it was a chintzy block. Mm -hmm. Didn't need to do it. Quarterback had the first down. There's Sparky right there in the middle. He's the one two in the bottom yet. Snap, and that has happened a couple times since Fantasy. Well, you got a freshman center in the game, you got a sophomore quarterback, and there are going to be some problems. And uh, they don't get to practice together very much. They had one, and, and Tommy Watson, we talked about at the beginning, the number 66, the right guard you see coming off there, was the center. And the reason, with the injuries, some of the reasons they shifted around, but one of the reasons he went to guard is they felt he could help the team better there, picking up blitzes and such from his guard position and getting out moving a little more and blocking. Yeah, they think he's their best line. Yeah. Awesome team. Come after Fant. Screen set up, juggled and dropped by Miller. That's the first time Fant's inexperience has shown, and he knows it. He dropped his head because he drilled that ball, and he's got to lay that up so that uh, it can be caught on the dead run and not struggling to catch a rope. <laughs> so here's the thing now, Bill. You got third and 12. Do you, do you, do you call it two plays yep. to make 12? Two down instead, to make. Of, instead of just going for the 12 head coach, two tell, plays. Yeah. head coach tells the offensive coordinator you got two plays. So all they want to do is make six or seven yards here. I knew it. I just wanted you to say it. Oh, I'm for impressed. Uh, you're smarter than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Tell that to my wife. Another poor first half. Not going the Bulldog play. This could help. Third and 12. Wide open. the first down. Broken tackle to the 22. 40 yards. 
Time and again, the Mississippi State staff said things to us like, we've got to get Desenzo Miller back on the field. He's got that ankle, but he's the guy that lights us up. Well, we don't have to explain. We'll just let you watch this. Look at that. That's balance. Oh, almost lost the ball. Good block by Jenkins. That's the way to stay in front of your man. Desenzo Miller cuts off of that. Then Ryan Clark misses the tackle. Good downfield block. Lincoln's taking care of Randall Gay springing that one to center. And Dante Walker in the tailback with the fake. Bant. An ill-advised pass. Good call, Mr. Barnett. <laughs> ill-advised. Yeah, but you know, going back to Desenzo Miller, you guys, and how everyone on this team thinks he can light them up. During practice on Thursday, a ball was thrown his way, but it was thrown behind him. And what did he do? He stuck his hands behind his back and he caught it and sparky woods loved it and he said he's a guy that can make us forget all our problems if we'll do that tonight it'd be cool it'd be fun to see <laughs> i'm taking that a breather more dangerous as a pass catcher tonight than as a runner dante walker that's the room around the left side somebody throws a shoe as he picks up maybe three i'm telling you what there are teeth hair eyeballs and shoes flying all over the place down there <laughs> that, this this is a game if you're a football player this is one you say geez i wish i could play in this thing it's a lineman's dream isn't it just, it is. just, just smashing, everything in there. looking everybody flying around diving you know what i love i love you love when somebody sells out you see guys just selling out jeremy lawrence 56 relish through that time just laying out trev fault diving over block has got a piece of his jersey one reason he's called the best linebacker in America by some. Miller back in as Walker gets reshod on third and eight. And Fant all day, now chased by Lavalle and gets that one off. And that is incomplete. It's a trap. Pretty close to a good catch, though. For uh, Donald Lee, incomplete fourth and eight. Fant has been impressive, but coach woods sparky woods offensive coordinator will teach him not to be running to his right and try to throw back across his body you can't get anything on the ball and too many times those things are caught and gone the other way 37 yarder john michael marlin to get the bulldogs on the board hooked it yep actually more of a pull that was wide left all the way and marlin now just four out of eight and Jackie Sherrill still looking for his first points. Sorry, you're, you're not the game day band. Sorry. We are the game day band. Yeah. Yeah. We're back. College game day. Presented by Discover. Saturday mornings on ESPN. Brought to you by Courtesy Chevrolet, Highway 145 North in Boonville. Hi, I'm Lauren Davidson, and on behalf of the staff here at the Perfect Monogram, I would like to invite you to come by and let us help you with all of your gift needs. We have a unique selection of gifts and accessories perfect for any occasion. Surprise your loved one with pottery from Jay Pierce and Fitzpatrick as well as our wonderful selection of collegiate collectibles. With one of these colorful frogs or monkeys, you are sure to bring joy to that little one. Stop by and let us help you with all of your embroidery needs. That's us, the perfect monogram at 203 North 2nd Street in Benville. And she continues to dominate the net. Here's the setup. Spike down the center. Check it out. Look, He's like, what? what are you going to call ITT right down the center? Hey. Oh, God. Come here. I'm out. Time out. Actual product demo. Right here. one 800 C A L L A T T. Yeah, that was fun. That was easy. Let's do it again. Come on, let's do it again. Save big bucks on every call. Dial one eight hundred C A L L A T T for collect calls. Well, you gotta love those shorts. They match the hair. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna get a call. Really an electric atmosphere tonight. A game sold out since August at Scott Field. 14 nothing LSU. Crowd is still in it and trying to keep the Bulldogs in. Golick's trying to keep his name in front of the public. But this is rock'em, sock'em football. Great football game. And, and Mississippi State was, was doing what they should against LSU, and that was going after him, 
through the air. Didn't get any points out of that, but they moved down the field. Certainly expect a lot more of that this game. Time for the Tigers to drive. Get some more. The middle 40. And five yards for Toefield. And we send you back to Reese Davis. Dave Bobby Bowden called Florida State's game against Virginia a defining game. I think he's going to like the definition of it. Virginia's Matt Shaw picked by Abdul Howard, and it's going to be a pick six. Abdul looks as if maybe he's getting a little tired there toward the end, but he'll get by Shaw getting the end zone at 26-7 Seminole. Close for a while. LSU has called time with a minute 22. They've been outgained by Mississippi State, 2-12 to 167, despite uh, what Desenzo Miller has done in the passing game, Mississippi State still without a point. Oh, the he took a shot there in the back of the head? That one down the field, but most of them, they're wide throws. It's just like a sweep. Give him the ball outside just like a sweep, let him do his thing. I'll tell you, his, his buddy, <laughs> Justin Griffith got to be proud he's wearing that number. Yep. Play like that, he can wear my number anytime he wants to. <laughs> of course, he'd be an eligible. <laughs> and he'd be a center. <laughs> that was a Mississippi State timeout. They have one. LSU still has a three. Kofi. This man missing. Plenty of reinforcements there. Led by Mary O'Hagan. Mississippi State's defense had one really bad game against Florida, which most everybody does. There's old Pulley, the dog. He is cute. <laughs> look, look at the tiger, yeah, on, the tiger, tiger on, that. on his back. <laughs> so except for the Florida game, you know, it's something really artificial to throw that game out. But except for that game, they'd be right there again among the top defenses in the country. Cofield gets out of bounds and stops the clock at 42 seconds. Yeah, and his coaches would have preferred that he not run out of bounds. Jimbo Fisher, offensive coordinator for the Bengals, will get him over there and teach him, look, we want as much time to run off as possible before we punt this ball away. Good sound defense that time by Mississippi State. We talk about them running the ball, but they also had all their gaps covered. Connor Stevens stringing the play out on that last one. Ray Ray did his back, and Donnie Jones just went down to 31. Fair catch. Mississippi State after a 43-yard punt has 35 seconds and one timeout. Well, they have one timeout. There's no doubt they have to try and get it down the field for a field goal, Bill. Don't you think? I mean, especially the way they've been making the yards. It's been through the air. Keep doing it. Try and get down there in field goal range. I, I just think it's so important, not only for a statement to the fans, but for Coach Sherrill and his staff to make a statement to his team, we're not going to come out here and be conservative. We're going to let, throw caution to the wind. We're going to get after these people and find a way to beat somebody. Fant remains the quarterback. He's 7-12, 107 yards on an interception. And in there and fires one, which Miller can't bring in. Incomplete. That's a touch throw, and that's another mistake by Fant. Looks like he's Nick now. Yeah. He's holding his left shoulder. Hey, Bill, you talked about the statement that Mississippi State would like to make, but the statement Nick Saban would like his LSU team to make is dominate this game and put a team away while you can. You've got them right now 14 to nothing going into the half. Let's not get lackadaisical, and let's try for once to dominate on the road this season. It's been a while since they won back-to-back -back SEC games on the road. Chance to do that tonight. Fant with a bad shoulder. Good look off a nice throw, and Clarence Parker gets out of bounds at the 25 second mark. Lavalier had the pressure that time. Again, not a lot of sacks for this LSU team through the year, but they're certainly getting pressure on. They get it on Madkin, now they're getting it on Fant, and you saw it before. Fant was holding his left shoulder. Well, this patchwork offensive line has really gotten a little better as the game has progressed, but also fans throwing on rhythm, and that helps enormously when you're trying to protect. 
the third and a short five. Hunt Pope gets it off over the middle, intended for Parker, incomplete, almost intercepted by Ryan Clark. And 19 seconds with fourth and four. Show you what we're talking about with the kinds of stunts that LSU is executing to get pressure on Fan, and he had pressure again this time. Rather than just a straight rush, the ends come down inside, tackles loop all the way around, and he just can't see. They're all in his face. There's not a nice little pocket there. Good job by LSU's front four. No blitzing. So Jared Cook, after the Bulldogs can't move it. Oh, jeez. The kick, Dominic Davis walks away no chance he's going to get to that one 63 yards by six yards that is his best punt and fan is going to have to get some attention to the left shoulder at halftime you know we see it and i guarantee lsu sees it as well back for the last 11 seconds of the first half in starkville at the moment it's the sound of freedom and excitement, and every night is Saturday night. Welcome to Party Central, from TV Music For You, 30 dance hits that will turn your living room into club cool. Central on two cassettes or two CDs, 100% maximum fun and no two drink minimum. Here comes the Yachty Fox, Murderer, I'm the lyrical gangster, Murderer, let's talk about sex, baby, let's talk about you and me. Pump, pump the jam, pump it up, why your feet are stumping, down on the right Party Central on two cassettes or two CDs. New from TV Music For You. Here's how to order. Call this toll-free number now to order Party Central. Two cassettes, $21.99. Two CDs, $26.99. Plus shipping and handling. Have your credit card ready and call this toll-free number now. Probably one more snap and then halftime at LSU will settle for the 14-0 lead. And it is largely the work of one man. They have 171 total yards, 116 of those on six catches by Josh Reed. And their second touchdown. Four years since the Tigers won back-to-back -back in the SEC on the road. They're halfway there. Let's send you back to Reed. Dave, thank you. Ron Gilmore, Mark May here with me. You know, it was one week ago tonight that we watched Auburn in a home game. A lot of electricity in the air at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Take care of Florida. Knock off the highly touted Gators. Could Auburn bounce back, get their feet back on the ground, and get ready to face a Louisiana Tech team that's known for the upset? Well, they'd come down to Damon Duvall again. Tied at 41. Duvall to win the game. Tommy Leather. No, Mr. Automatic, Mr. Groza is wide left, and we're going to go to overtime instead. And Auburn gets the ball first. Daniel Cobb, who had an outstanding day, 28 of 48, 381 yards, and five touchdowns. This one to DeAndre Green. Auburn up 48-41. Lot Tech with the last chance. Luke McCown will be picked, Mark. And Luke McCown had a great day today, but this ball is a poorly thrown pass. Over 400 yards last year in this year, but just a bad decision on this pass. And Auburn intercepts the ball and takes it back on the return. In total offense, he was over 400. La Tech falls 48-41. Auburn 6-1 now, 4-0 in the conference. They go on the road. So a road portion of their schedule now at Arkansas next week. But the Tigers sitting pretty in the SEC West. And, of course, that's of great importance to LSU fans. Joe Paterno again going for number 323. And from the looks of things there, I bet you guessed how that thing turned out against Northwestern. Back at you. Dorm life, nightlife, and, of course, football. The rites of passage at Texas A&M. A season of college football from the sidelines. Thursday at 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific on ESPN. How much time do we have? 
Did I go too far? And we're back. College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. Unscripted with Chris Connolly. Premieres Monday at 5 on ESPN. Where to next? Only 10 days left. So, 344 Taco Bell stores in L.A., 204 in Indiana, 50 in Baltimore, 3 in Bangor, Maine. Dude, just go left. Taco Bell's the only place in the country that has an Xbox you can win. Along with Project Gotham Racing, the hot new game rated E for everyone. Just get a new chicken quesadilla or any food or drink item for your chance to enter online and win one of thousands. Right now, the only place to win a hot new Xbox is at Taco Bell. The Bow. Resistance becomes strength. Becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gem in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. Back on the College Game Day scoreboard, halftime report LSU up on Mississippi State at the half. 14 to nothing. Well, Penn State was last in the nation in rushing offense, last in total offense, last in scoring offense. They were last in the Big Ten in rush defense. Not much reason for optimism for Penn State against Northwestern, but Joe Paterno said, hey, we lost to four good teams, make some plays, we could have won three of those games. 35-31, Penn State already matched his point total for the entire season. Fourth quarter, Zach Mills, a redshirt freshman, to Bryant Johnson, who had a big day, makes the catch nicely and sets up this. Mills, Eric McCoo, Penn State on top, 38-35 with 14 kicks to go Northwestern. Plenty of time for victory right, the play they used to win it. But this one goes to the left. John Swigert can't get out of bounds. They had to use the timeout on the next play to Kunle Patrick and maybe took a little too much time here. Oh, you can't stay in bounds with this. you got to get rid of the ball and you've got to get it. you got to drop it. You can't do that. They run out of time. No magic for Northwestern this time. But a little magic for Joe Paterno. Finally, the Penn State Nittany Lions get their first win of the season and number 323 for Paterno, tying Bear Bryant on the 1A victory list. Congratulations to Joe Bob, but congratulations to this Penn State Nittany Lion team. At 0-4 going into this team, many didn't think they had a chance, but this is their biggest offensive output of the season by far. You know, you talk about tradition a lot, what tradition does for you. Penn State kids played very hard. Wisconsin and Illinois tied at 28, another wild Big Ten shootout. Wisconsin had come from 25-7 down. Jim Sorge, Lee Evans, Badgers on top by seven. But then Kurt Kittner goes to work, Rodney. Oh, he went to work because his team needed to have it done. Here he finds his man for a touchdown. That's Brian Hodge to get it done, going on a 14-yard TD. And then he comes back once again to find Brandon Lloyd for a 22-yard touchdown pass. They had blown a big lead. Kittner stepped up, and Brandon Lloyd stepped up to get Illinois the win. Talked earlier in the day, Kittner needing to make some plays. He made a lot of them. Four touchdown passes, 401 yards. The Illini bowl eligible at 6-1, a 42-35 win in the Pac-10. The longest home winning streak in the land, Oregon, Austin Stadium against Stanford, 42-35. Kerry Carter plowing in there, but Stanford missed the extra point. 42-41, Ducks hanging on. Same score after a Stanford pick of Joey Harrington, Brian Allen Mark. Move the pile, keep the feet moving, keep the feet moving, check into the end zone, he scores the touchdown. Stanford on top, 49-42, one and change left to go. Harrington, captain comeback, nine fourth quarter comeback in his Heisman candidacy career. Harrington, last chance, new. Not close this time in the 23-game home field winning streak is history. Stanford, handing Oregon his first loss of the season. Key play in the fourth quarter. Oregon ahead 42-41, a third and one in their own territory. They try to throw the ball with Joey Harrington. Instead of running it, it gets picked off. That puts Stanford in business. A lot of special teams miscues and big plays in that game as well. Arizona and Washington. Boy, Wildcats had a tough time since Pac-10 played starting. Cody Pickett finding Patrick Reddick deep. 
75 yards. He'll take it to the house, and the Huskies go up 21 to 14. But of course, this is a Washington game. It's going to get tight in the fourth quarter. Tied at 21. John Rattay, Ferris, Farmer Mark. Right up the middle, the shortest way to get to the goal line in the end zone, and he takes a straight hit for the score. It's now 28-24. Pickett. Reggie Williams, the freshman, and oh, where's the pass interference on the offensive guy? He should have been called for a face mask. He grabbed Joe of that face mask there. No call. He escaped, and Cody Pickett, bad shoulder and all, gets into the end zone, and Washington has done it again. 12 times in New Heisman's 22 regular season victories at Washington. They have come from behind in the fourth quarter. That is just a testament to the way he conditions these kids and the way they always believe. 31-28 picket. Nice day despite playing hurt. Over 400 yards passing well over 400. Look at this. Cal Winland. Very, very early. Went down the field with their first drive and they got a field goal on that vaunted UCLA defense. And they've also been very aggressive. We've seen a sack already of Corey Paz. Cal's defense playing tough so far. And Cal's beaten them a couple years in a row, so there's a little bit of history going here. And Deshaun Foster trying to get things going for the Bruins. LSU is on top of Mississippi State. It's a break. Things not going well for the Bulldogs. 14-0 at the half. We're back. We'll talk SEC after this. Circuit City presents Expo 2001. 30 days of what's new, what's hot, and what's next. Featuring live demos of HDTV, digital photography, high-speed internet access, and more. All this month at Circuit City. Circuit City, we're with you. Hey, what's with the cap? You got a Little League game today or something? Nah, I'm just used to it. You know, a lot of people aren't crazy about their hair. They got different ways of dealing with it, especially if you got flakes. Here's how I deal with it. I tell them, use this whole new head and shoulders. It goes directly to the scalp to help stop flakes before they even start. So you end up looking like you were born with a great head of hair. Now, who'd want to cover that up? Oh, forgot your hat. No, thanks. New head and shoulder shampoo. Unbeatable daily dandruff protection. Unbelievably beautiful hair. Not human visitor from another planet. On October 26th. Where is home? K-Pax. Celebrate the possibilities. Okay. She doesn't like it when you sneak up on her. No way. K-Pax. Rated PG-13. At theaters Friday. Third Saturday in October, Tennessee and Alabama. Third quarter tied on top 17-14. Casey Clawson to Jason Witten. Tied into Weck. A tight end. They found him for a one-handed catch earlier. And then this big touchdown down the middle. 21 yards made it 21-17. But Alabama would answer. Tyler Watts leading his team. Option. Ahmad Galloway would score. First rushing touchdown. Tennessee's allowed all season. 24-21. But in the fourth quarter, a time-eating drive. 17 plays. 85 yards. Clawson on the little boot scoring there made it 28-24. They would add another seven, the key number here. That's the number of offensive plays Alabama ran in the entire fourth quarter and the number of times Tennessee has beaten Alabama consecutively. No one has ever done that before. Kentucky and Georgia. 10-7, Cats on top, Jared Lorenzen. Well, he shaved a little bit of weight. He's moving around back there. He's making the big throws. Aaron Boone, Kentucky up 16-7, Lorenzen. 377 yards, four total touchdowns, three passing, one on the ground. But David Green made a big play on the snap there and then found Fred Gibson. Bobbles the snap, a great catch of takes down Green and Gibson, getting them the ball down the field to play for the touchdown. Worked so well once, might as well try it when it's tied at 29 in the fourth. Go right back to Gibson. This time, 56 yards, just takes it from two defenders and goes in for the score. He breaks a 59-year-old school record with 201 yards receiving, 43-29. Georgia beats Kentucky. They have a showdown with Florida coming up next week. Vanderbilt in South Carolina. The Gamecocks no trouble blowing out Woody's doors. 46-14 the final. And Eli Manning, another nice night. 25-31, 257 and three touches. Ole Miss beats Middle Tennessee State by a count of 45-17. We were supposed to drop that score, weren't we? Colorado and Texas in the Big 12. Texas have won 11 straight at home. Cedric Benson going up the middle, and they're up by 10. 
Later on in the second quarter, here's the freshman again. And Cedric Benson, they needed a running game. They found their star running back. He will definitely be a star in the future. Remember the name of Cedric Benson. And with Cedric Benson's running, Chris Sims can throw a little more easily. Find Sloan Thomas. Texas roll 41-7. They had all the balance today. Chris Sims throwing the ball behind Benson after Benson was running the ball nicely done. But they were running up the score, throwing the ball late when they were up by 27 points. What's up with that? Poor Mac. Poor Mac. Can't get anything going for Mac. Baylor and Oklahoma. Sooners have now won 20 in a row. They await the showdown with Nebraska next week. Big day for Jason White, 33 17 the final. And speaking of the Sooners, Husker showdown. Boy, Nebraska had a tussle with Texas Tech. They escaped 41 31 in Memorial Stadium. They are 8 0 headed into the battle with the Sooners next week. Texas AM and Kansas State and K-State's had a rough time since coming up one point short at Oklahoma. They are 0-4 in the Big 12. They're 0-4 in conference play for the first time since Bill Snyder's first year in 1989. And it was in the Big 8. 21-24 the final there. Back with more after Come see why everyone buys at Iuka Ford. Whether you need a new program or pre-owned vehicle, they have it at Iuka Ford. Going to the lake, they have that truck or SUV you need to pull the boat. Want something a little more sporty? Check out their full line of Mustangs. Even if you need a family sedan, they have what you need. And remember, with every new purchase, get a free tank of gas and one free oil change. Come see why all roads lead to Iuka Ford. You'll like the way we do business. This month on the Encore Movie Channel, you'll get recent, big, hit movies. And the Encore Movie Channel is the only channel that promises a great movie every night. Guaranteed. <laughs> the Encore Movie Channel. The only channel that promises you a great movie every night. Guaranteed. Engineering excellence is a Mississippi State tradition. The university is a national leader in using high-performance computing for design applications. Automotive engineering will be the focus of a new Center for Advanced Vehicular Systems. Students at Mississippi State get hands-on experience and win national honors in competition to design and build vehicles. And engineering students advise the high school team that won a national solar car race. In research, teaching, and outreach, Mississippi State Engineering is building for the future. Southeastern Conference, a tradition of excellence. The SEC, celebrating 10 years of the Conference Championship Game. Supposed to be a showdown between arguably the best offensive player in the ACC, Woodrow Dantzel, and the best defensive player in the ACC, Julius Peppers, and it's pretty clear who won. Defense! Yeah, the woodshed was open for business, and Woody was the guy that was in it. Peppers sacking Woody there, and Julius again on a, dare I say, a Heisman moment play. And this is a play that just signifies what he's been able to do this year. And talk about Hops, this is going back to his basketball days. He's got to roll out and put pressure on the quarterback, but watch what he does. He defends, throws up his arms, knocks the ball in the air, but has the wherewithal and the athleticism to come down with the interception. Speaking of his hoop days, we understand that he read a letter last night that he, he might play a little hoops for Matt Doherty this year. Darian Durant finding Bosley Allen, 14-3, the heels up. Still in the second quarter. Oh, Curry would, well, Ronald Curry did some things for North Carolina, too, leading a touchdown drive. That was a disappointed Woody Dantzler, who was held at just over 100 yards of offense, 38-3. North Carolina, since that 0-3 start, they have been impressive. Florida State and Virginia, Seminoles have control of that one, 29-7. Chris Rick, solid, if not spectacular, but the Seminoles heading to a showdown with Maryland next week, and they will handle this game in fine style. Up in the ACC, North Carolina State, Georgia Tech, tie the 10, NC State ball on the 27th, Phillip Rivers, Ray Robinson, fumble, Chris Young takes it to the house, Georgia Tech would win it 27-17, but I can't say that they were always pretty, Tech tried seven field goals, they only made two, they screwed up the kickoff, they even lined up on the wrong end of the field for the opening kickoff of the game, and bottom line, they had more points at the end, they win it 27-17. Maryland, I mentioned that they have the showdown with Florida State coming up next week. They take care of business. 
59-17, the final Duke's losing streak now at 19. LSU trying to stretch his road winning streak in the SEC to two. And LeBrandon Tofield, number 2-2, two -two, doing some business with 14-0 LSU. Request backup units. Backup units, please where you headed? Police business, back off! You got it! If I split my pants! Oh, dude, you don't need change for collect call. Just dial down the center with 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -T. It's free for you and cheap for them. Hey, buddy. This is my show. Frisk me, cuff me, call me Shirley. Save big bucks on every call. Just dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect call. I hate grapes. Green and purple and seedless. Sure, they taste great. But on a supermarket floor, they can make for nasty slips and falls. Hi, I'm Al Mangoni, a safety specialist with Liberty Mutual Insurance. There's no reason the supermarket floor should ever be a dangerous place. So we're working on non-slip flooring and other materials to keep you safe. Liberty Mutual. It's more than insurance. It's insurance in action. I also hate bananas. Final round of the National Car Rental Classic at Disney World. That's on ABC Sports, 3 o'clock Eastern Time, 12 out on the West Coast. Tomorrow at Tiger Woods, pictured. Going to have a lot of work to do to be pictured with the trophy at the end of the day. He has 11 shots back. You never know. It's nothing, after all. You never know. Mississippi State, not quite such a hill to climb. They've got to get some offense going. They're down to the Bayou Bengals, 14-0 second half. Coming up from Start Vegas. This Halloween, watch AMC's Monster Fest with five nights of gory double features and a Dracula marathon. Buzz in on AMCTV.com and play You Don't Know Jack about Monster Fest. Hey, you could win an iPad. Watch, play, what do you got to lose? Except sleep. In this time of need, the American Red Cross is profoundly grateful for your generous outpouring of support. A long period of uncertainty and recovery awaits us all. Thanks to your contributions, the American Red Cross is providing life-saving assistance, including food, shelter, grief counseling, and precious blood. We still need your help. Please call 1-800-HELP-NOW to offer your financial support. Thank you. Together, we can save a life. Growing up, all we wanted to do was play. But as the world opened up to us, it became easier to get sidetracked. And just one single bet, one simple step can blow not only your education, but a chance to compete in the sport that we love. They watch from the stands while their money changes hands. The only thing worth betting on is ourselves. LSU shutting out Mississippi State as we get set for the start of the second half. At sold out Scott Field, Dave Barnett with Bill Curry and Mike Gold. 47 more yards, about 8 minutes, 20 seconds, more time of possession for Mississippi State. Nothing to show for it. Do they stay with Kevin Fant at quarterback? If Kevin Fant is okay, and this is going to surprise you, but because of Wayne Matkin's positive attitude, and he's the leader, you go back with Fant. If you can't go, then you got to go back to Matkin. Whoever they go with, keep doing it. 160 yards through the air, keep throwing it. Screens, swing passes, down the middle, whatever. Keep the ball in the air. Well, it is Fant still with the helmet on, warming up for all appearances. He will stay Mississippi State signal caller for this third quarter. But first, LSU is going to get it. And a bouncing kick gets by Dominic Davis, retreats to the three. And they had him centered. Return of only 10 yards. Story of the first half, all six of Rohan Davies' completions went to the same man, Josh Reed, for 116 and a touchdown. 
Desenzo Miller is the light bulb of this football team. He electrified the crowd and his squad for the whole first half. Kevin Fant doing it on the ground and through the air, but we'll see he was holding that left shoulder when he's back on offense to see if that affects his play. And the second half starts the same way. Davey needing only one receiver. That's all seven complete now to read. Down to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Dave, Nick Saban told us earlier in the week he did not like the way his team was coming out of the locker room this season and going into the second half. Tonight, his speech was all about the third quarter. He told his team, I guarantee you that the Mississippi State coaches are in their locker rooms telling their team that they can hurt us in the third quarter because that's been the trend. We're going to just prove that and take the belief out of them. We have the ball first. Let's do something with it. Let's finally make the third quarter ours, Dave. Outscored. 37 to 7 in the third quarter this year. It's the only quarter they haven't won. And the only time they did outscore an opponent, it was way back in the opener against Tulane. Uh, they, made, they made it real simple in the first half and looked for more of the same. Davey either turned around and handed off to Colfield. He had 14 carries or threw it to Josh Reed, who had all six of the reception from Davey in the first half. Offside to penalty against the Tigers, so this is first and 15. From the eight, Brandon Cofield, no game. Mary O'Hagan got him. Mississippi State gets a break in the form of a mistake by LSU on the very first play of the third quarter. They must capitalize. They've got to keep them down in here, make them punt out of the end zone because field position yep. is so, so important. They haven't been able to get in the end zone because they have not had very good field position much of the time. David racing in at tailback. It braces Cofield. Break to him. Maybe. Finally, with a target other than Reed, and it's the fullback Solomon Lee. Just his second catch of the year. Just his second touch of the year. In fact, he has never carried it. Boy, this was a team effort. Dorset Davis to see 99. He had the pressure. Ben Mawinney and Prather on the tackle on the outside. First look at 99 coming in. He'll get in the face of Davey. Here comes the pass. Mawinney and Prather. Mawinney in on his, I believe, seventh or eighth unofficially tackle. He is all over the field tonight. And all that for a gain of two, third, and 13. They are on their feet. Mississippi State fans rattling the cowbell. No pass rush on Davey. And a strike to Jarrell Myers, short of the first by a couple yards. So after every catch had been by Josh Reed, Davey spreads it around a little bit, but they still don't convert to third and long. That was a two-man rush, Mike. They dropped nine. Joe Lee at his best. Uh, being a ping pong ball if you're one of the two men rushing. Tommy Jones to kick. Virtually no win tonight. Very high. And bobbled by Ray Ray Bibbins and recovered at the 38 yard line by LSU. <laughs> Mistakes in the kicking game and penalties are one of the, the two of the key ways you get to be one and four. Now this Mississippi State team is playing its heart out right here, but they continually self-destruct. There's something in the mechanism of this squad so that they make mistakes at the worst possible time. Kyle Kipps, 85, he's the one who's going to fall on it. Well, from a plus nine to a minus seven. Big reason they won in four. Pass incomplete. A good 10 yards behind Jarrell Myers and tipped at the line, it looked like. And as soon as it got tipped, Davey looked at his lineman and said, you got to cut. That was a quick pass. Whenever you see a quick pass, normally the offensive lineman is supposed to go low at the legs of the D lineman to make their hands go down. They don't do it. Well, they tried. Well, they tried. Yeah, they absolutely tried. Stevens is too good, good, good an job. athlete. Yeah, he yep. just kept his feet and got that big hand up there. Number 90. Great player. Davey gets it off and complete 
to Myers. Amazing he got that pass off at all, and it's 19 yards to Jarrell Myers. Dwayne Robertson, number 45, coming from the backside like he was shot out of a cannon, and it just looked like there was no way Davey was going to get rid of it. But not only did he get rid of it, but it was pinpoint accuracy. And again, that whip of an arm, he doesn't need to follow through because he has such a gun. Wing. It's amazing. What was that? Wing. What? One more? <laughs> nah. <laughs> That's enough. Every Henderson taking a turn to tail back. In the 18. And Davey has a problem on the connection this time. Cal and UCLA. Listen up, Michelle. Reese Davis. I'm sure she'll listen intently, Dave. Cal is up 3 nothing. UCLA has been having a little trouble getting that offense going, so a little trick ration. Double reverse. Foster to Perry and now to Craig Bragg. And Bragg's going to pick up a couple of blocks and turn on the speed. 42 yards to the house and the Bruins. Being the lead, 73. Of course, as Michelle knows, I think the Bears have won two in a row. <laughs> Davey's toss, not a good one. Way behind Corey Webster. And that brings up third and 14. We saw Davey go high a couple of times in the first half, Bill, and there behind and low. But he had his biggest, biggest game of his career last week. They went over Kentucky, 383 yards, and again, he is the undisputed leader of this team, both on and off the field. The players love this guy. They are not picking up the third downs tonight. But opposite from the way their season had gone, and Davey uses a timeout with 11 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. digital photography with the Intel Pentium 4 processor the center of your digital world she's not your daughter but if you give her a ride home after school she might as well be. Carpooling. On the wings of Goodyear. There may never be a play in college football more memorable than the Doug Flutie to Gerard Phelan fantastic finish when Boston College. For a limited time only, order your free copy online at hofn.org or call toll-free 1-866-ENDZONE. From the victory at Fort McHenry that inspired our national anthem to the struggle at Antietam that helped preserve our nation, Maryland is where American history lives. Call 1-800-MD-IS-FUN for your free vacation guide. Also, ask for this special free stuff from the Free State Coupon Book, offering everything from free meals to free admissions. Call 1-800-MD-IS-FUN and rediscover the history of America. Experience the treasures of Maryland. Call for your free vacation guide. Maryland, welcome. Bulldogs needing a stop here on a third and 13. And you'll want to watch the left side of your picture. Up top, Josh Reed. He was wide left. Davey, time to step up and gun it to him again in the end zone. He gets plastered by Josh Morgan but hangs on and has his second touchdown, 22 yards. What a great move by Josh Reed going to the outside, then cut to the inside. Watch him. Watch the deep to the outside. Right there and then in. Gets the defender on his heels, basically. Never gets to turn back, and Morgan is laid over for the help. Not everybody in the secondary has had a chance to cover him, and still nobody has. 
Corbello makes it 21 nothing. The Josh Reed show continues in Starkville. And the Rohan Davy gun, that bull whip, uncanny accuracy between the two defenders and it's 21 zip. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. These are quarter carrots and these are half. They're beautiful. What kind of cut is that? This is a round cut. If you look hard, I'm sure you can see them. They're fantastic. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. These are eight carrots, and these are ten carrots. Make it a Bud Light. Man, that sandwich was good. Is there another one? We're saving it for Dave. You can't resist Wendy's bacon mushroom milk with all that bacon and cheddar. Hey, Dave, why don't you stay out a few more laps? Okay. Where's that sandwich? Here, I hope no one ate my lunch. Well, you gotta have one. You gotta have one. We see it out of here. Now. This film has been given an R rating for horror, violence, gore, nudity, and some language. So be warned. From the producers of House on Haunted Hill, 13 Ghosts, rated R. Starts Friday. Smash mouth football right up until kickoff. A little football amongst friends. Sunday NFL Countdown. Sunday mornings at 11 Eastern, only on ESPN. It's frightful sight if you're a Mississippi State fan. 21 nothing. they trail. 11.23 to go in the third quarter. And uh, there's no answer to number 25 in the white jerseys. Been the same problem all night. Not much at all on this Prather return. And down we go to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Dave, Jimbo Fisher gave an impassioned speech in the locker room at halftime. He told his team, we need to get ahead by three scores. Make it 17 to nothing or 21 to nothing so it buffers you if anything bad happens. Be smart, don't fret. There's Take Jimbo. this first drive and you'll cut their heart out. Become a team and understand how to win games. You don't win by accident. But in fact, Dave, it was that mistake by Mississippi State on the punt return that gave LSU the second wind in that drive. And they didn't need a whole lot of help as it was, but they gladly accepted the fumble by Ray Ray Bivens. And now State starting from the nine-yard line. Miller just to the line of scrimmage. And the thing they could least afford on this kickoff, after the mistake on the fumble punt, was for Pig Prather, their most reliable player perhaps. Jimbo again up there offering some more instruction to Rohan. But for Pig Prather to mishandle the yep. kickoff return and then try to bring it out. So they start at the nine-yard line. It's the first time all night where there has not been any electricity. All the air has been sucked out of Scott Field right now. That is silent. Miller to the 12. And a flag down. Well, you know my feelings about options. If you don't run an option, don't do it. But also... As we find out what this penalty is going to be built, you know, I know you try and stay in game plan, but you know what? I really think the Mississippi State game plan has got to be throw, throw, and throw some more, and that certainly is not going to help getting backed up there. But this is the LSU pass defense that has been burned a lot this year, and you're down 21 to nothing. You know what? Penalty, on the offense, penalty will be declined. Third down. So you come out, you run one up the gut, and then you try an option when you're not an option team. I, I don't. I guess I don't understand those two plays. Well, I certainly am not going to disagree with you. What you would hope, though, the conventional wisdom would be try to run a couple of things and try to make a first down, get out past the 20, and then loosen up the offense. But they didn't get much done on the first two plays. Four wides and fans of the gun on third and seven. That's another... LSU interception, Ryan Clark. Damian James had one in the first half. 
And Clark with three safety, intercepting Kevin Fant deep in Mississippi State territory at the 22-yard line. There was you, Fant. Tries to look off. Ryan Clark wasn't buying it. Broke beautifully when Fant's eyes came to Jenkins. Great job breaking on the ball. That's experience versus youth. You said it, Michael. And if the third touchdown hadn't cut the heart out of the Bulldogs, we'll see if Clark sets up the score that really will finish the job. Cofield is sprung out for Hever Henderson, it is. Debrie Henderson. Sophomore from Opelousas, Louisiana. Questionable all week with an ankle. Connor Stevens and Mary O'Hagan bringing down Debrie. Well, they're already at the magic number under Lou Saban, which is 20. Anytime the Tigers have managed 20 points in his year and a half, they've won. They're 11-0. When they haven't gotten to 20, they're winless. 0-6. Oh, and, and Nick Saban. Hoping this will turn into a four-touchdown lead. Reed hit immediately, and that's the best they've covered it. Now, we're going to make it real easy for you at home. Whenever LSU's in a passing situation, we'll just circle Josh Reed. <laughs> That's pretty much where the ball is going to go. We'll make it easy for everybody. That was the two-man rush again. This is really interesting. Joe Lee Dunn's scheme with nine dropping. Nothing fancy. A little out route. Outside receiver Clayton running him off. You might see a little pump fake and then, and then throw the deep one to Clayton here. Where's Josh? Third down. There's Josh. Everybody watch him. Thought they won't go to him. Make me look bad right now. John Birdsong is upside on it, now backs off. And the throw is over the middle, and it's Michael Clayton to the one. 20 yards, first and goal. Call that one, Bill. The true freshman wasn't going to be shut out much longer. <laughs> the guy has uncanny football instincts coming across the middle here, absolutely fearless. He knows exactly what's in store, and in fact, he bowls all over the tough Josh Morgan, the free safety, 47 and down to the one-yard line. Two tight end look, and Dominic Davis takes it over. Big Dwayne Pierce, lineman, and Solomon Lee, the fullback with the block there. The State fans are not happy about what's going on. Joe Lee done wondering, what do we have to do? Third touchdown of the year for Dominic Davis. Corbello makes it 28-0. LSU. So in less than seven minutes of the third quarter, the Tigers have doubled their lead. Special teams problems, turnovers on offense, giving Joe Lee Dunn. The American flag, it symbolizes freedom and justice for all mankind. Throughout the land, millions of Americans are proudly displaying the flag. Introducing the American Freedom Collection. A set of two quick display flags, one O Glory flag and the exclusive God Bless America flag. Each flag is made of weatherproof, fade-resistant material. They attach to your car window in seconds. Just slide the slot in the window. It's that easy. It looks great on mailboxes, bikes, trucks, even inside your home. The American Freedom Collection also includes four reusable peel-in-place flags. There's no glue. Just peel off the flag and it'll cling to any smooth surface. Call now and receive your personal American Freedom pin. You get everything. The Old Glory flag, the God Bless America flag, the Peel in Place flags, and flag pin. The entire American Freedom collection for just $14.99. Call now. Order your American Freedom collection for only $14.99 plus shipping. Have your credit card or checkbook ready and call 1-800-949-6996. Tony Kornheiser, Michael Wilbon. I knew, I just didn't want you to know. Two guys with a lot on their mind. We've got issues. Shaq and Kobe didn't get along. I don't like you, and we're going to have to do this show together. Now, they're teaming up for Pardon the Interruption. Nice name. A new show on ESPN. Sports and other stuff. We're fat, we're bald, we're old, we're white. And one of us is blind. Pardon the Interruption. 5.30 p.m. Eastern weekdays on ESPN. And again at 7 on ESPN2. It's not pretty. 
for you. Gets animated on the LSU <laughs> sideline. <laughs> Some of the hardest yeah, hits well, doled he, out by the coach. He's going to hit the wrong dude here pretty soon. <laughs> he's got a Band-Aid on his chin. Maybe he already did. Well, last kick right out of bounds at the eight. Better luck this time, and then Pig Prather is planted at the 25 by Ryan O'Neill. One of the keys to LSU's success this year is their marvelous kick coverage. They give up 14.3 yards per kickoff return. All night long, they've kept their lane integrity. they tackled well. They've converged on the football. All those things that you try to teach a coverage team as coaches. Nice job. And from the looks of things, this has just turned into Kevin Fant's game since the second quarter. First couple times he was out there, he moved him nicely. First drive ended on an interception. The last drive ended on an interception. On the mark this time, Grindle across midfield of the Tiger 48. 26 yards. Nice throw. He almost waited a little long to throw that one. But he finally got it out there. Brindle's going to come all the way from the left of your screen to the righty. Again, he hangs out just a little long, but he certainly dropped it in there nice. Brindle Brook comes in motion to get him started on the crossing pattern, the deep drag. Excellent concentration on the ball. Option right, Desenzo Miller. Across the 45. Brady James on the tackle, the leading LSU tackler with 51 coming in. And Mike, you and I do not like to see teams that run just a little option, but what I think might make sense here is the play action pass off the yeah. option. They yeah. run two or three, you get quick touchdowns with those skinny posts You're right. off the play action simulating option. Let's see if they do it. Ribbons and Grindle are wide left. Long count, second and six. Give up the middle, Miller. And bust this one outside for the first down to the 32. Driven out by Lionel Thomas. 12-yard pickup for Desenzo. Derek Thompson uh, getting up slow for Mississippi State, but a nice job of cutback running by Miller. That's where you really have to be disciplined on the back side. Take care of your responsibility. That's the guys up at the top. Guys are all caught inside here. He's able to break it back outside. He had good perennial vision. Is it perennial? Mm -hmm. Is that peripheral? That's what you said. Yeah. Don't ask me to spell it. Senzo says, this has been the worst time of my life. He's maybe 85% this week, and that's the healthiest he's been since he was injured. Hurt the ankle against South Carolina. And has uh, set out the Florida and Troy State losses. Not looking like he's effective enough. Another deflection at the line. Right out of Fant's hands, it went off Marquise Hill. One of the great characters of NFL history and one of my buddies and teammates, Alec Hawkins, coined that allusion to peripheral vision. Man, you gotta have good perennial vision. And he couldn't see very well except about once a oh, year. Oh, so you, you said that as a joke. You weren't serious. The joke was on you. Uh, well, that's a common thing. Really, Alex Hawkins was there. He's a joke. You're not kidding. <laughs> One to 33, Fant. Chased and dropped, and Chad Lavallee got him. I talked about him early. Not overly large but has probably the best moves on the d-line just coming inside again those stunts we're talking about bill he started out wider and came inside and people crossed behind him he's going to come from your left just pushing off the center there coming off of him guard lets him go that's what happens with those stunts. Linemen don't pick up people coming through the gap. They're well, going they, out somewhere else. Well, they've only had one week working That's together, right. this offensive line. First LSU set, third and 17, overthrown for Harold Lindsay over the middle. Down to Michelle. Well, and how hard has Lavalle been working during this game, Mike? I know how much you admire this player. In the locker room at halftime, he had to have the right pant 
leg of his pants sewn up from about the knee to the mid hamstring. He was ripped and he had to have two guys working on him stitching up that pant leg. And you were watching? Oh, it was right in front of me. Because everybody does offensive linemen are holding. <laughs> Shooting Bill, ripping his pants off. Jared Cook. They brought that one down nicely inside the 10, but got no roll. He'll net only 20 yards. Sunday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern. Stuart Scott, Tom Jackson, Sterling Sharp, Steve Young, Chris Mortensen, Chris Berman. Perry for all today's NFL games. And an in-depth look tomorrow at the 40 seconds between plays on NFL Countdown, only on ESPN. And about seven or 800 things happened in those uh, 40 Let seconds. Let me tell you what, there's one thing that happened between the 40 seconds when I was playing, sucking all the air out of the stadium I could <laughs> so I could make it through that next play. Tiger is at 28 nothing, 6 to 9 in the third. Dominic Davis. Off his touchdown run starts this drive with a gain of 16 yards in the play. He bounces outside. Bumped out by Corey Banks. Dominic Davis does have marvelous peripheral vision. He does everything for this football team. In this case, he's the running back. But he's also a kick returner, and he'll go in and play corner at times because of injuries in the secondary. He can do it all. Dominic Davis. Started in the defensive backfield last week. In fact, they say it's really affected his prep time on both sides of the ball, but he's the first two-way Tiger since Tommy Casanova in 69 and 70. One of the great names in L.A. Yes, Dr. Tommy. Yep. M.D., right guy. Played for the Bengals later. Davis making a living going back to the outside on plays that are supposed to start up the middle. He's just bouncing it. And what you're going to see out of Mississippi State defense until you find this happening, when you're down a lot, you want to make a play, you really fly to the ball, and what happens is you, lo you leave your area of responsibility. And that happened on the play previous as well. Missed tackle there by Mario Hagan. He should have had him in the backfield. Second down and six. Corey Webster went in motion. Davis. It'll be close, about a yard shy of the first at the 45. Here's what Nick Saban said to us in a conference call Wednesday of this week. We don't seem to have a knockout punch when we're ahead. Our backs are to the wall. We have not played 60 minutes all year. We want to prove that we can dominate. Those are his words. Those are direct quotes, and that's what he's admonishing his team to do here tonight. He wants them to finish this job, polish somebody off. Steven Peterman, the left guard, that he looked at for LSU. And Brian Kenny is going to update us now on Cal and UCLA. Yes, Dave. Cal making it tough here on UCLA. Bruins 5-0 coming in here, but this is Eric Holtbretter. Bought himself some time, put it up in the air. Sharon Arnold brings that back in, so 10-7 in the second quarter right now, Dave. Michelle, that's Cal 10, UCLA 7. Cal. Uh, I'm sorry, it, could, could you say that one more 10, time? 7 Cal. Michelle, really? do, you want to, do you want to sing the Golden Bear song? No, oh, you guys suckered me into that last year. And I think because our listeners are such loyal viewers, I will spare them this time. Steven Peterman having, having difficulty coming off. Certainly can't barely put any pressure at all on that left leg. That's not good for the big man. Yeah, he's, he's at left guard right here. Gets rolled on. That's a lot of times what happens to the offensive linemen. They're blocking. They have no idea what's coming up behind them. They're just pushing on their man, and someone falls into their leg. Looks like he's moving better yeah, now. As he gets going a little more. Yeah, he hope it's not serious. Sophomore from Mississippi, Waveland, Mississippi. Third and one, Davis. Untouched into the secondary until he hits an official. The umpire got in his way. That may have saved him six. It's 18 yards as it is. Umpire looks like a pretty sturdy guy, though. He took that hit pretty well. He's going to be so sore tomorrow. There's going to be purple spots on his chest. I'm serious. He's got a little size to him there. I think it'll be all right. They, they, Mississippi State selling out up the middle. When you do that, if you bust through to the second tier, you have a lot of room. Well, That's exactly this, what happened. This this LSU offensive line is just ripping off the football now. They're having fun. They're knocking people around, making room for the back. 
Mike Wallace, the umpire, who took the hit. He play all 60 minutes, it looks like, at umpire. Davey. With a short toss. And Josh Reed pretty well covered that time. Tim Prather. And uh, what is Peterman's situation, Michelle? Well, right from the initial look, the trainers told me that he's got a sprained left ankle. And from the way that it looks, they do not expect him to return in this game, Dave. You know, and, and he was a guy, last year he was a defensive end. In spring he was a tight end. He just moved to guard in August. So another one of those guys that grown over time and grown into the offensive line position and has picked it up well. Eddie Drive continues, second and eight. Flag down, Davis. Run down by Prather for a loss, 42. And now Prather up and holding his right elbow. They make a nice play, but a flag goes down, and then you wonder they're blitzing up the middle that someone end up in the neutral zone. Offside yep. on the defense, five yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Yeah, range it pours. You make it a great play. Yes. Yep. Yep. Doesn't seem to matter what Mississippi State does. It does not go their way. And these are little bitty details of concentration. So just about every play they're sending two right up the middle. Hagen usually and Mawinney. I think it's only a matter of time till we see a trap. Because that's what you want to do when you're getting that kind of blitz just consistently. Prather shaking off the elbow, stays in. And second and three, Davey going deep. And a touchdown for Eric Edwards. 29-yarder. Eric Edwards has two catches, both for touchdowns this year. Sophomore out of Monroe, Louisiana. And that play worked because, Coach, the run was going. They're playing the run. Then you sneak out a guy who certainly doesn't have a whole lot of reception. You think he's going to be a blocker, and all of a sudden he's wide open. And receiver coach Derek Dooley over there, awfully happy with him. Corbello, 35-0. This was a 14-0 game at the half. And LSU, which had been outscored in their third quarter, 37-7, has finally exploded. Eric Edwards, 260. I think he's a blocker. There he is. Wide open for the touchdown. 35-0. Mississippi State's got to find an answer. Every so often, a song comes along that captures the first blush of romance. Introducing Rock and Pop Classics, two deluxe albums featuring your favorite romantic hits. Each CD comes in a beautiful and informative 32-page book. Get two rock and pop CDs and books for only $17.99. Then you'll have the opportunity to audition other deluxe albums. No obligation to buy, satisfaction guaranteed. You'll enjoy the greatest love songs of rock and pop music. have the ultimate romantic collection through this special introductory offer. 28 rock and pop hits on two CDs plus two hardcover books for only $17.99. Here's how to order. Call this toll-free number for rock and pop classics. You'll get two CDs in beautiful hardcover books for only $17.99 plus $3.99 shipping. Have your credit card ready and call now. Well, it's a happy corner of Scott Field. Now they're with the LSU band, and most of the LSU fans are. 35 nothing. A little over three minutes to go in the third quarter. And Fred Reed on the return, and another bobble. That's a really forgettable night for the special teams of Mississippi State. And Wayne Madkin, who was taking warm-up snaps during that last... LSU series with the helmet back on now. 
Eric Edwards, number 47, is lined up right here. He's so excited because he's going to get to run a route. He hopes his man blows the coverage, and sure enough, it's all over as he gets even with Richard Ball, who has the responsibility to cover him, and a perfect throw, not leading the big guy, but just right between the four and the seven from Rohan Davey. And bless his heart, you coach him so hard. Richard Ball, a first-year transfer from junior college, has not learned exactly how to read his keys just yet. One of the problems that Mississippi State's had as they use the timeout now, Mad can right into the game and before they can get up to the line of scrimmage has to call timeout. But their average drive has started at their own 17-yard line. Down again to Michelle. Well, Coach was just talking about Richard Ball. There are 17 junior college transfers on Mississippi State's depth chart. Eight of them are first-year transfers. Four of them are starters on defense. Now, Richard Ball is not a starter, but the process of breaking in the JUCO transfers has become to be known de at Mississippi State. But midway through the season, that process is still a work in progress. Now, no one is pointing fingers at specific players, but coaches and players alike tell us some of these transfers are still arriving late for practice, missing meetings, or just not giving their best effort in practice. This week had been a little bit different. The peer pressure had been evident with the leaders on the team saying, hey, stop talking about what you're going to do now that you're in Division I and start doing it. But still, Richard Ball, a good example of maybe a player who has not been fully de -jukenized, Bill Curry. So it would appear, and it's really hard to see somebody just coming in the summer so quickly into the season against this kind of speed and talent. Very difficult. From their eight, Madkin, who's been sitting since the start of the second quarter. First pass since he comes back in is almost a spectacular catch of midfield by Justin Jenkins, and Madkin laid it in pretty nicely. And to continue on with what Michelle started, Bill, from a coach's standpoint, you get junior college guys who maybe have a long leash at the junior college level. The reins aren't pulled as tight, then they come to Division One, and all of a sudden, the reins get a little tighter on them, and sometimes uh, the, the reaction isn't what you want. No, you sort of have to, uh, it's a little bit of the two-by-four method with the mule. <laughs> it really is. Madkin, caught by Clarence Parker. Ooze and Oz on the head by Demetrius Hookfin. Junior corner, Kentwood, Louisiana. One after another, the Mississippi State players are limping off. Serious hit, head up, nice right tackle. around the belt buckle. Beautiful form tackle by Hookfin. And an LSU defense, which was dead last in the country against the pass, giving up 335 yards per game. <laughs> 191 they've given up so far. Flag is down as Fred Reed is a turn away at the 19-yard line. Should have the first down, depending on this indication. Well, the way it's been going for Mississippi State, I don't even want to say it. Five-yard face pass on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the line. First down. So Brady James has grabbed everything else <laughs> in a maroon uniform, so he might as well get a little face mask. We've got him down unofficially for seven tackles. It feels like he's made about 20. On the ball at the 24-yard line. <laughs> the offensive guy's got Brady. Uh, who's got who? <laughs> that's, got why, who? that's why he was smiling. <laughs> when you're up 35 zip, you can smile at 35 zip. Yep. Double snap. Madkin's pass batted down. Three or four now have been batted down at the line. And Jeremy Lawrence got this one. Yeah, this is going to sound really strange, but it's the truth. Mississippi State has played extremely hard. And Mike, when we watched tape of them play, Dave, you were there too. They were playing the last couple. They didn't play this hard. They have played so hard, yes. but just not well enough. And, and LSU would have hooked most anybody tonight, I think. Troy State wouldn't have put no. A drop by Lindsay. But they are definitely reverting to, to form now because Jenkins had a drop. 
on a deep ball that was a, a, a nice throw. And now Jenkins, uh, not Jenkins, but um, Lindsey puts one on the ground. And it's that concentration thing that you just haven't gotten done in this team this year. And, and, you, and you look at LSU. I mean, you know, that they win big in their first two games against Tulane and Utah State. Lose, probably people thought they would lose against Tennessee and Florida. Have a mediocre game, comeback game against Kentucky to win at the end. But I'll tell you, offensively, they are yeah, right up there. Madkin to Reed and Reed dragging defenders. Throws for the first down. It's a 35. He's got it. Great effort. If anything good can come out of one of these nightmares, it is for your young players like Reed to get game experience, make big plays, show their gifts, and make first downs. This is well executed. Breaking tackles, ripping it straight up the field, north and south. Nice job. And with the last minute of the third quarter, Madkin showing his scrambling ability and another drop. And this is what killed him against wow. Troy State. Eight or nine drops That's, right in the hands yeah. of Terrell Grindle that time. And people are all over in, Madkin in, as if it's his fault. Watch. He, he can't yeah. throw it and catch it. Watch Grindle turn his head down the field. Right as he's going to catch it, he'll turn his head. There it is. Starts to turn his head. Doesn't look at our kids at home. You're out there catching. Look it all the way in. Starts to turn and run with it before he has secured it in his hands. The leading receiver from a year ago. And the guy who came on it. second and ten. Five wide. Right back to him. He hangs on to this. Tried to make a move on hook fin. Travis Moses over to help out at the 44. Put yourself in Wayne Matkin's shoes. He's the winningest quarterback ever to play at this school. He came into the season as captain of his team, expecting big things from his offense. <laughs> he can't get the guys to catch the ball. It's Justin Jenkins laid out on the sideline. Sneak for the first on third and one. And you really get the feeling that Madkin is searching for answers, and he's starting with himself. He took full responsibility. Yep. In the conversation with us, he said, look, i got to get the 10 guys around me to do better, and I've got to start making better plays. He didn't blame anybody other than himself, and that's what leaders have to do. There's the middle part of the game. Gave way to Kevin Fan. Now back in, and that throw intended for Antonio Hargrove with two flags on that contact. Adkin close to the line of scrimmage, didn't go over it before firing for Hargrove. Yeah. D Damian James is going to get called there. I don't know why he had to crawl up his back. He looked like he had some pretty good coverage. James with his fifth interception of the year tonight. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. See Matt can roll and so the receivers are going to start to follow that way. Got pretty good coverage. It was it was right before you got to him. It was the left arm. It's always that off arm. They'll call that. You yep. put your hand on Absolutely. his back, and they're going to make that call. You keep that off and break the front hand over onto the ball, and they won't call it. So from the 39, another drop. Was this intercepted? Yeah, it was. It was by Lionel Thomas through the hands of Clarence Parker. Demetrius Hookfin with the hit. Thomas with the pick. I'll tell you what, Wayne, I wouldn't be smiling, buddy. Wow. I'd get in somebody's face. Gracious oh. me. Doesn't even have it anyway. I mean, the hit doesn't even cause it. No, Hookfin no, no. Does get you get hit. a scholarship. You catch the football. I mean, it's got to be just exasperation. But we all have different responses to things that are just unbelievable, but I'm just saying that I would not be grinning. So back to the Tigers. Their third interception. And Devery Henderson with a carry on the last play of the third quarter. Well, the Tigers finally unlocked the secret to a good third quarter. 
their first of the year was it ever they add to a 14 nothing halftime lead and they are running away with this one at Starkville. 